in the sky over there, it's weird. Anyway. Um, Tuesday, we are going to start. I'm going to be like prepping. Tuesday. Had to hurry up and bring one of my boy cats in to the vet to put him to sleep. And because I got scratched getting him in the box on my arm, they wouldn't take him. Any animal that's been biting anybody or scratching anybody within a 10 day period can't be put down to sleep. So they suggested um, to take him to the animal control people. And the animal control center is all the way to the other end of the island. Okay. We get on the expressway. Traffic central, parking lot, horrible. Um, the sun, I was like, let me drive, let me drive. No, 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 no. Charlie's in the back and he's meowing all the way. And then he calmed down, thank God. And I um, kept talking to him and everything, calming him, trying to calm him down. So we get there and this woman came out. She's like, I said, I want to put my cat to sleep. So she said, well, I don't know if we have medical staff. Hold on. So she went back inside. She came back out. Looks like she was going home. Mind you, it's like almost 4 o'clock at this point. I had just made the vet within 9 minutes of them closing the doors. So, yeah, we do everything at the last, last damn minute. <clears throat> so... She goes in, she comes back out, she says, yes, come in. So, we get in there, we sit down. And, um, filled out all the forms. Told them I wanted to do the individual cremation, get the ashes back. Sign all the papers on these little notepads, nothing in writing, on a piece of paper. I hate that. And, um, so the lady comes out and she says, look, well, you want to... So you ask goodbyes, and we did that. And she took the box, and she brought the box back within like two, three minutes. She said, no, he went right in. I'm like, okay. Mind you, I had put my son's sweatshirt on, and it was like 82 degrees out to cover the scratches on my arm, which were pretty severe. Don't worry, my son doctored me up before I, you know, before we left the house real quick. He put this magic clear gel on it that it heals it all up instantly. My thumb was still throbbing like crazy. I had caught um, one of his big teeth in the middle of my thumbnail. And he chomped down big time bed. We both had gloves on. This cat was no problem, okay? like his whole life my sister gave him to me because she had too many cats and she was only allowed three in her hoity-toity jersey community there she had too many let's just say that way too many she gave three of them in name only to her neighbor she gave another three to her girlfriend around the corner i took three but physically, she had to give me one. Okay. He was not a friendly cat when she gave him to me at the apartment after my house was destroyed by Sandy. And we had to live in the ghetto on the second floor. Uh, he had fleas. So, which infested my other two cats, Tinkerbell and Mosley. And Jack, my husky my big husky that was a nightmare that went on for five months of fleas trying to fight them hundreds of dollars picking the fleas off of jack having him shaved uh it was embarrassing it really was as far as having a husky that's shaved i will never do it again um but it did help and then finally i caught wind of these collars that were like $50 a piece. Mind you, I'm paying a mortgage and I'm paying rent at the same time and I'm paying um, utilities on both and food and it was ridiculous. 
so uh, my sister denied that he came with fleas. I'm sitting at the computer at the edge of my bed in my room and my ankles were big to shit. Pink spots all over them. I'm like, what the heck is this? And I actually started looking at the animals and stuff and found out that it was fleas. We never had fleas. Never had fleas in my house. So now I got rugs in this stupid apartment. And that was an electrical nightmare. Probably would have went on fire um, if we stayed there any longer. 6.30 in the morning, my husband wakes me up. He calls me in and he says, help me get this furniture out of the way. It was the big um, coffee table that I had custom designed and built. And it was three tiers. It was be It's beautiful. Anyway, helped him move that, move the TV, and he's yanking out, I kid you not, a regular, like, electrical cord, stapled to the wall behind the TV. And he said he smelt smoke. So, I want to get back to the cat. So they took the cat. Because I could tell you stories about that apartment that would just... We'd be here another hour. So she took the cat, she brought the box back in. And... I switched seats with my son because the air conditioning was going right into my ear and it was really... Hurting. It was hurting my jaw. So we switched seats. So I grabbed him and I, and I nudged him after she gave me back the box and I was like, you know happy that she didn't have any problem with my cat um i couldn't hold him i couldn't trim his nails he was fixed i did get him fixed we captured him and i'm gonna say that captured him in the apartment my son has scratches scratches on his back from him jumping over him and taking off like a panther um, trying to get him in the box so that I could put him on the ASPCA mobile unit, um, which was $125 at the time, a lot cheaper than going to a vet to get him fixed. So he was fixed. I did get that far with him. But as far as petting him, nobody could pet him in the house. The extent of anybody petting him was maybe a little quick, short, two strokes on his forehead and that was it so that was the relationship that i had with that cat but still he was family he got along with jack he got along with all the cats all the kittens my son's girlfriend had two boy kittens in here he got along with them no problem but people nope only person was me but it was very limited um like i said i couldn't even trim his nails nothing nothing if I, he would hide behind the washing machine. So that's where we got him out of. Mind you, I turned the washing machine on, banging on it. My son says, let me pull it out. Now with his shoulder the way it is, I'm like, wait, watch his shoulder. He was able to yank it out. And no sooner he yanked it out a little bit, like an inch, the cat came flying out at him. And he caught him and he got him down on the floor. And thank God he had the gloves on. So I took most of the attack. Um, trying to get him into the box. So I got his head in the box. And he bit me and my son still held him down on the floor. I'm like, he's strong. He's skinny, but he's strong. Um, don't underestimate him. So he, I got the head into the box. And then I tilted the whole box up on top of his body. And it, he went in close the door on his tail but he didn't get hurt um there was a gap there close the door and that's how we got him out of the house unbelievable so they now had him at the acc building which is a brand new building they just built it, it we've been waiting for this building for like 10 years it's gorgeous it has the recycled air you don't even smell that there's an animal in there at all and the dogs um, all the spots for the dogs are full, I found out. So I signed all the papers, 
on the electronic notepad. So now, yesterday I called up and I asked for the woman. Oh, she's not here. She'll be back tomorrow. Okay. Call up today. This afternoon. He says, oh no, she's on vacation. Hold on, I'll get you somebody else. I'm like, okay. I swear, I think I was talking to the janitor. So, I get this woman on the phone. She tells me her name. And I told her my name, and I said, I'm trying to find out about Charlie. I said, the um, crematorium was supposed to call me, according to this other woman, when we did the intake on Tuesday. And she said, um, she says, let me, she put me on hold for a few minutes, and then she got back on, and she says, let me call you back. I said, do you have my number? She said, yes. So she repeated it, and I said, yes, that's it. So I'm waiting and waiting and waiting like 15 minutes. She gets back on the phone. She calls me. And she says, I'm very sorry, um, Mrs. Johnston. Um, this has never happened before. And she tells me this at least six to eight times. They had cremated Charlie with the rest of the cats that they had and the rest of the animals. I said, so how much is that then? She says, oh no, that's free. And I'm like, okay, so when do I get my share of the ashes then? Because at that point, I'm like, I had to process the fact that I was not getting my individual cat's ashes back. Who was part of my family for the last 12, 13 years, okay? And she says, you're not. And I just threw the phone across the floor. So my son picked up the phone. And she had told him that, well, we can make a, a memorial. Just give us a picture of Charlie and we can make you a memorial for your cat. And again, she apologized and apologized and apologized another three, four times. And um, he, he said, my mom just went in the shower. So when I was in the shower, I was screaming because we were going to leave, me and my son, but it took so long to find out about what's going on with Charlie that he decided to just, well, he had to go. Let's just put it that way. He had made other plans, and his friend was waiting for him. They went to go buy a used car, which didn't work out again for the second time. And that's frustrating. You want to go in? Go ahead. Do I want to go in? So, I'm so, I don't know why this is not working. Let's see if that works. Oh, that cleared up a little bit. So, I'm in the shower, screaming, why? It's just like, this has never happened, this has never happened, this has never happened. Uh, I'm like, yeah, why did this happen to me? You know, the whole nine yards. That was a wreck. Freaking wreck. The son's trying to console me when I came out of the shower. And I said, he gave me a big hug. And... I think he understands now that even though he tried to make friends with him at the apartment, but, you know, it just wasn't happening. There was something psychologically um, twisted in his little head. But like I said, I was the only one that made any kind of decent connection with him. And Monday night... Oh, here we go with the motorcycles here do tricks tonight. I'm just going to fly by. tried to explain it to him. I think he understands now that, you know, how I felt about Charlie. He was still part of my fur family. He may not have been part of the human family that much. My husband was so jealous that he couldn't pet Charlie. He saw me giving him a couple of cookies on the windowsill where he sleeps and stuff and hangs out. I have the Rubbermaid box propped up. 
and um, he's dead. Blankets and all kinds of stuff. But he was sick. And because I can't really have, I can't hold him to give him medicine, how was I going to take care of him afterwards? And he's up there, and he's antisocial, and to humans. So I had to put him to sleep. I, I had to make that determination. Which I really regretted having to do, but, you know, it had to be done. Um, so now, my son called my husband after I went into the shower and I came out and I called him and I told him he said yeah I heard and he said so while I'm talking to him I'm, she wants to do a memorial and I'm like I could do a better freaking memorial than this stupid bitch could do you know I have a whole wall memorial to my jack that's pretty cool pretty amazing and I even sent it to a couple of friends of mine who have lost pets and they're like wow I'm gonna do that they got inspired so yeah this is New York this is all night long all day long with these notes anyway so um, he t I said I, I was such a wreck after I came out of the shower. I was sh not shaking, but I was just, I was crying. I couldn't see the phone even, couldn't see the type. So I said, tell her that I want, I want a coffin with his name on it because I'm not even getting that at this point. I have two kitty coffins and I have five urns for my dogs. And, um, Ticket. We deserve that one. Speeding. So, a lot of distractions out here tonight. It's like Friday night. It's Friday night. Friday night live from New York. Anyway, um, so I said I want to quote him with his name on it. And my son added the part about I want the delivery guy reprimanded. Because he was the one that determines what happens to these cats. And I've seen the type of people that actually pick up these animals because years ago, my little dachshund had a heart attack on the way to the vet. She had already had one in the house and I knew it was the end. So we took her to the vet to put her to sleep and just put her down already. She was, she was 17 and a half years old. That's about the best as you can get from a dachshund. And she had heart uh, congenital heart problems to begin with for years and she was on heart meds so I knew it was the end and they did it so fast that they gave her the shots and yeah I was there I even brought um, Jack with me because he was raised with her so he knew he saw what was going on and let me tell you that dog for three weeks didn't want to eat couldn't sleep he was looking all over the place he knew she was gone he was just like lost in space so dogs feel it. They know. They know everything. Um, anyway, so they were came, they, the van came to pick up Daisy and the rest of the animals. Just as we were leaving, they were like, well, the van's outside. You want to make this delivery? I'm like, yeah, I want to make the pickup. No problem. Because I had already known on the way. So my goodbyes took Jack my son we went in the car and was sitting there watching them load the animals into the van and my own dog into the van which let me tell you that's even more painful I think and um they smelled a pot I'm just gonna say it and they were rosters and they were smoking you know you could smell it on them whatever it doesn't matter so this is probably the type of person or it could be the same company i don't even know there's like three or four of them and they're all out in long island there's one in the city and which i didn't know about until yesterday because i was doing some research 
sorry if this is long guys but it's just a lot so there's also some learning things in here that you might want to pick up on some learning tips about putting the animals down instead of going to um hang on lost my train of thought because i'm such a wreck today um so I saw the type of people that pick up these animals, and it's probably the same people that picked up for the uh, animal control center yesterday, or whenever, Tuesday, Wednesday, whenever they picked up. Same type of assholes. There you go. Anyway. So the tips are what I should have done looking at this in the back seat was I should have just taken her him I'm sorry. I was thinking of Daisy should have just taken him to the vet down the block down the road a few blocks in that I have had dealings with um, with my previous animals but because of CV they wanted me to come in and they wanted to take the animals into the back room and give them injections which no you doing that shit in front of me okay and they wanted me to wear a mask and I wasn't having it I wasn't having it so I haven't been to him in like three years maybe more um, so what I should have done was just show up at his and just let him put Charlie to sleep. This way I would have had the ashes. Everything would have been pretty much more secured than having these bozos at the ACC. I don't know who they hired. Um, but anyway. So they're going to, I got a text back from the girl at the ACC and... They're going to send me an empty coffin with Charlie's name on it. She wanted to make sure that the spelling was right on Charlie's nameplate. And they're going to ship it to me. Oh, bug was getting me. Um, this is the first time that this has ever happened to me. I don't know why this had to happen to me. I actually have a file in my filing cabinet that says, Fuck the Johnstons. It actually has that label on it. And it's pretty full. Okay. Everything that we've gotten screwed over. Ripped off. Messed up with. All the paperwork goes in that folder. Over the years. It was my husband's idea. To make that file. So Lake Ferry has her files. Yeah, I got my file. It's the Fuck the Johnstons file. Okay. I never had all these problems before I got married, but then again, I didn't have all these animals either. I did have guinea pigs when I was 20, 18, 19, 20, no, earlier than that even. Yeah, because they lasted a few years. Mine was the longest living guinea pigs ever. I had one that lasted six years, and they were only supposed to last like four and a half to five years, whatever. He had a good life. Anyway. That was my week. Not knowing what was going on. I said to my son the other day. I said the crematorium hasn't called me yet. To ask me for the payment. For the credit card payment. Because they had said to me it was $300. Mind you. I paid almost $600. With private. Vets and stuff like that. Private vets. Regular vets. I'm upset that I will not be able to have a proper grieving experience. Um, you know, there's Vietnam vets that have not have have not come home from Vietnam, and I display a POW flag for them in their memory in front of my house and on my car. And I'm just trying to wrap this up so that it leaves you at least with a good feeling. Um, my son's friend 
said that I should relish the coffins and the urns that I have, at least. And I'm like, yes, I do. But Charlie did not deserve to be cremated and just cast away like he was invisible, like he was garbage. Even though he was not a close relationship like a normal cat with me, he was still family. And I still wanted to give him the proper burial and the proper funeral like the rest of my animals. Now we're gonna ride motorcycles through the park. Oh great. Illegally with no helmet. Unbelievable. I hate living here. I hate it. I hate the people at this point right now. I know it's not her fault. I know it's the douchebag that picked up my cat. It was his responsibility and he fucked up. At that point, I hope he realizes that he fucked up. I hope he gets reprimanded. <sighs> At least to some extent. People have to become responsible. But I just wanted to give him a proper... Proper funeral. Now I'm gonna get an empty coffin. <sighs> Not looking forward to it. Cause it's just gonna be even worse. When I get it. It's bad enough that I, when they hand delivered me all these coffins and these little urns over the years, you know, it ripped me apart that day all over again. Like when I had put the animal down or when they died. Um, I just wanted to do the right thing. I tried. I tried, Tommy. I did, but he will be remembered. He was still a good cat. Never got mean with me, except for trying to get him in the box. You know, Monday night, he was sitting where the rest of the cats kind of gather around me. He, the last three, four months, he's been hanging out with them when it was cookie time. Like twice a day. Like in the morning and at night before I go to bed I give him cookies. And Monday night he came over to me and he did the blinky thing with his eyes. And I blinked back with him. And it was almost to say, yeah we're friends ma. Thank you for that. Nothing else to do. Um... Thanks, Mom. You know, like, maybe he got word from the other cats that if you go over to Mama, you could get some secret cookies. Because I did that to Mo the other day. He sat there and he was looking at me. Mosey's like, Ma, can you give me some secret cookies? So I think either he was trying to say, I don't really feel good because he's been, like, the diarrhea and the throwing up and the... And that's been a daily thing for like a week and a half, or at least eight, nine days. And um, he um, he was sick. I don't know how much longer he would have um, lasted, honestly. But he was still running around like a maniac, you know. But Monday night when he did that, I was like, it's the only time time that he actually sat there like that all by himself next to me like that I think he was trying to tell me something you know whether it was thanks mom for giving me a nice home you know nice cats to play with nice bed to sleep in and um, fresh blankets Fresh kibbles, fresh water, everything, every day. It was almost like he was trying to tell me something. I wish I would have videotaped it. I really do. Because 
I didn't know that I was gonna have to but the next morning, Tuesday morning, I'm like, he's still sick. This is ridiculous. And he was all can yell at me for letting him be that sick for that many days. But you know what? I thought, okay, in the two, three days, he, you know, his stools would get back to normal. And, you know, whatever he did or whatever, maybe he's got a hairball he's throwing up. But no, it, it just got from bad to worse. So, I just, all I know is... I did everything I had to do. They fucked up. They fucked up big time. So, I don't know when I'm going to get this empty coffin. And I'm looking for... I'm looking for suggestions as to... What am I going to put in that coffin? If anybody wants to comment. Thanks for listening, guys. I really appreciate it. Good night.